Thanks for joining us today. At City Life, we have one purpose, making it easy for people to say yes to Jesus. We believe today's message will empower you to do exactly that. But remember that church is so much more than a sermon you listen to. It's a living, breathing community that we invite you to be a part of. We hope to see you on a Sunday morning at City Life. On the mountain, in the valley, in the crowded streets, or the empty desert, in our hope, and in our waiting, we are never alone. God is with us. In this world, we don't like waiting for anything. I don't, at least. I don't like waiting for anything. Um, it's incredible the pace at which our life and our lives and our culture and our world is moving. It is moving so quickly that you just have to speak words. Like you just say, hey, Siri, hey, Alexa, da 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 da, order me this, do this. Like you just, in a, like you can find out almost any piece of information in about four seconds. Just you say it, and there's the information right there. We don't have to wait for very many things. And just a side note, if you guys can't see that screen real great, we're working on that as well. We're going to get some more screens happening in there too. We were aware that that drum cage is blocking it. So I'm just, I'll probably be talking like this all throughout the morning. I'm going to try to stay focused. I've been doing a great job in Edmonton, you guys. I just want to let you know. I've been doing really well. I've been doing really well. I stay on track and I, but... I don't know, it might be the anointing of this place that I just get these rabbit trails. But, okay, think about this. Sir, you show up right at 10.15, your doctor's appointment, 10.15. Sir, uh, th- what's your name? Uh, Jeremy Black. Oh, great. You know what? If you just don't mind having a seat right here, the doctor will be right with you. 45 minutes later, yeah. <laughs> what is going on here? Uh, sir, uh, if, you just, if you don't mind waiting in our, in our guest lounge, uh, the service department will be done with fill in the blank. Ma'am, if you don't mind waiting in this lineup right here, uh, the, the next available agent will be with you, fill in the blank, and cue the elevator music, which is truly from the pit of hell, just so you know. <laughs> and you're just getting tortured with this music, and you're waiting there, and you're in the doctor's office, and there's always, it's usually quiet, but there's like that mom with the one kid or whatever, and that kid is like leaking from every hole in their their body, and they're just walking up to you and like nuzzling against you, and oh, they just say, oh, little Johnny loves you so much as you get covered with all this slime and slobber. No one likes waiting, do we? Uh, Or perhaps there's some different types of waiting. You might be waiting for test results from a medical exam, and you're like, oh, I don't know what's going to be happening here. You might be waiting for test results from exams that you took in school. And those results are going to be pretty massive, depending on what grades you get. And you could be waiting for all sorts of things. Uh, There's not a lot that a person can do when they're in the waiting room of life. Well, that's at least what we typically think. You know, we typically say, okay, God, we do two things. We say, okay, God, let me check my two things. I'm just going to stay on track here. (laughs) First of all, we ask God to do something, don't we? God, would you fill in the blank, right? When we're praying to God, God, would you fill in the blank? And then, typically, what do we do? We just wait. And we casually sit back in the waiting room of life and like, well, God, if you're going to do this, then you're, let's get her done. Yeah, <laughs> Let's get her done. You're waiting for God to get her done, right? God, would you help me out here? But today, I don't believe that that's the way God wants us to wait. I think he wants us to wait well. And I believe, um, I want to help us discover and redefine what it's like to be in God's waiting room. Because ultimately, there's two waiting rooms in life. One, there's the world's version of the waiting room. But God actually has a special waiting room for every Christ follower. And it is a beautiful, beautiful waiting room. And so I want to talk about that. Uh, But before, I think this will help contrast and help us understand God's waiting room when we first look at the world's waiting room. So are you guys with me? You understand what we're talking about? Okay. I understand what I'm talking about, I think. So I think we're all on the same page here. So I'm going to use God's waiting room as, uh, just compare it to a doctor's office, just because I think 
it kind of parallels pretty well. So here's some things that the world's waiting room is like when we're looking at a doctor's office. Now, this, these are some things that start to develop in that waiting room. First of all, you can get impatient, can't you? Okay, you're here at 1015, and the doctor will be right with you. And right with you. He'll be right with you. And he's not. You start getting impatient. Uh, you, you often begin to complain in a waiting room. You might not say it out loud, but when you get home with your friends or on a, a rant and rave somewhere, you're just, can you believe that I am a dirty bear? So uh, you also get very frustrated. So you walk in there, 10, 15, and then you're waiting for about 25 minutes, and another fella comes in, and he walks right in, and what happens? Takes a seat, and then, oh, Mr. Johnson, uh, it's three minutes in the seat. Mr. Johnson, I'd like to call you up. And the guy gets up, oh, it's great. And you're just like, God bless you. <laughs> Isn't it true, though? Yeah, I think it's true. Uh, we also get judgmental, don't we? We start to judge. In, the, in, a, in a doctor's office, we start looking at that person. Like, why are they here? They don't look too sick compared to me. Like, I should get priority. Isn't that true? Or you do look at that, you look at that, that, that single parent with that child again with the slobbering nose, and you're like, if they could just get that child under control, man, if I, was, if I was their parent, let me tell you what I would do. Isn't that true? We get so judgmental. And we can even just say, what is that person wearing? Why is this taking so long? Why does it smell like this in here? Why, why do the receptionists do this and not do this? Like, we get so judgmental. Are you guys tracking with me? I feel like this is like a real world problem for all of us. Uh, another thing is we begin, we begin to compare. We start comparing in this waiting room, and it's very similar to being judgmental, but we'll start to elevate ourselves and just say, well, I'm doing a little bit better than this person. It, you just start playing the comparison game. Um, and you can start to get very unhealthy in a waiting room. Now... I am not a doctor, but I know we've got doctors in this room here. And uh, I don't want to know what kind of germs are in a waiting room. But the doctor that I talked to last week, they said, let's not talk about it. <laughs> I said, okay. So it's just like you, you're just in this waiting room of festering disgustingness sometimes, of all these germs and coughs and bacteria and slobber. Another thing is you get quiet. You verbally get quiet. You get quiet in a waiting room, right? You ever notice you got that devil music playing and, and then uh, just quiet. You don't say much. Internally, everything's going on, but you start to isolate yourself and you get quiet. Finally, you can get fill, filled with fear and anxiety, wondering what is, this, what is the results of me being here going to be actually be like? And so... We can get filled with fear. We can get filled with that anxiety of what happens if I have this or this, these are the results of this test. You know, the doctor's called you back after you've already seen, uh, seen her and the doctor's saying, hey, this isn't going to look good. And that's at least what you're thinking in your mind. You don't know. And you can get so wrapped up with fear and anxiety. Ultimately, waiting rooms are not fun places. I don't like them at least. I don't think the majority of you enjoy them either. Now, when we compare this to the waiting room of life, we can compare all those traits. Very often, we do get judgmental on life, you know? We do start to compare. We can get filled with fear and anxiety. We can get filled with all these things when we're waiting and we don't know what's going to happen. And the great thing as Christ followers is when God gives us a promise, we actually do know what's going to happen. The thing that kills us is not knowing how it's going to happen, and when it's going to happen. We know it's going to happen. Any Christ follower who has said yes to Jesus, we know that the Bible says, by his stripes, we are healed. So we get to experience full healing. As a Christ follower, we will be 100% healthy in Jesus' name. We will be. But when we experience that is the thing that we have a problem with often. Is it on this side of eternity? Is it on the other side of eternity? We don't know, and it drives us wild. And so, but God doesn't want us to wait that way. Let's talk about the second room, because this is a much better room. God's waiting room is so much better. You guys are super attentive. Still super attentive. I do love how quiet this room is. 
in the sense of the, all these panels in the back wall. There are so many people that work. You can barely tell, but there's all these foam panels these guys built. Beautiful. I believe there's going to be even better panels in God's waiting room. Now, God's waiting room is much different. Let me talk about it for a second here. It is not an unhealthy place, actually. It's a super health. In fact, it can be a place, uh, though it can be uncomfortable, we can benefit so much as Christ followers in God's waiting room. This can be an incredible place. This is not a germ-infested, disgusting place. Uh, this is an incredible place where you can actually leave fully empowered by the power of Christ to be a difference maker. So here's some th- qualities and some traits of, uh, of God's waiting room that can develop in you. You ready for it? Okay, that's good. Are you actually ready for it? Yes, okay, okay. Uh, it can be a place, first of all, of maturity. You can go in immature in a certain area, and you can actually leave God's waiting room mature. That's pretty cool. And we're going to talk about how to do this as well. But I'm just going to list some of these traits. Second, second thing is you can find recovery or refreshment in God's waiting room. You can actually get, you go in there and your knuckles are bleeding because they're dragging so low on the ground. And you are so tired because you've been pulling all-nighters trying to get this church ready. <laughs> and you are just, just done in. You can exit God's waiting room fully refreshed, fully awake and rejuvenated. I think that's phenomenal. Uh, it can be a place to get strong and focused, actually. Now, anytime you watch the Olympics, you watch a, uh, a high-level athlete at a professional athlete, athlete at any level, what you actually see on the court, on the field, in the game, is a small fraction. It's just the result of a life lived well in a waiting room. It, getting up at the same time every day, disciplining yourself to do this over and over, strengthening yourself. When you enter God's waiting room, you might be weak and fragile, full of fear and anxiety, but you can leave full of courage, full of strength, ready to absolutely take on this world in Jesus' name. Uh, It's a place of safety. It can be a place of hope as well. It can be a place where you grow in your trust with God. You might actually be like, oh, God, I don't know if I fully trust you here. And you can leave with a confident assurance assurance in your faith and even more so in who God is. And you can trust him. And ultimately, God's waiting room can actually be a blessing. It can be such a blessing. Already, I feel like going to God's waiting room opposed to the other one. Um, But what is the main difference between the two? Well, let me tell you. The world's version is passive. God, would you do this? And you sit there and you just fester. But uh, did I say God's? I don't know what I said. In my mind, okay, the world's waiting room is passive. God's is active. Uh, The brain is just misfiring in certain spots here. Um, Waiting in God's uh, waiting room is not passive whatsoever. It's active. Now, I absolutely love this verse. Now we're going to go to it. Jeremiah 29, 13. Uh, There's two versions I have here. The first one in in the New Living says, If you look for me, God's saying this to us, If you look for me wholeheartedly, you will find me. That's a pretty promising verse. Uh, If you look in the NIV, it says, You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. So I actually looked up the Hebrew, like the actual original meanings of these words. And I think we have a breakdown on the screen here. I think we will have it. Uh, when we go to, you will seek me. Do we have that? Yeah, there it is. Awesome. So, so that was hilarious, actually. Uh, you, you will seek me. So this meaning actually means to search out. So this is our part. When we seek, we need to actually search out to strive after. That's a responsibility of ourselves. That's what this verse is saying. It's like, you will seek me. Okay, this is what it looks like. We've got to strive. We've got to hunger. We've got to, we've got to go after this. And then the next section says, and find me. So th- I think this is phenomenal. Here's some of the meanings. God will appear. He will exist. We can attain him. We will find him. We will acquire him. We will meet him. He will be present. That is a pretty cool promise. As we seek him in his waiting room, he's going to do these things. And it's like, you will seek me and find me. Um, And then it says, you search for me. And this is our job again. Frequent. 
This isn't a one-hit wonder. This is over and over, like that disciplined, disciplined athlete, over and over, frequent to follow. When, when people would actually follow Jesus physically as a rabbi, they wanted to be so close that the dust was actually kicking up. That was a cultural thing. They would almost be able to just touch his garment. They were just, we want to be in step with what Jesus is doing and where he's going. And so, you know, we need to follow. We seek, we ask, and we worship. And so sometimes, you know, we just think like, well, where's God going to meet me? I believe our God is so faithful that if we just, we purpose in ourselves, I'm going to search for him, I'm going to seek for him wholeheartedly, it doesn't matter what path you're on, as long as you're on a godly path, he's just going to go whammy right in the middle of that path and say, you found me. I think that's pretty comforting. And so, you know, we have a role to play and a responsibility. That's the active part of God's waiting room. You know, we're not waiting around. It's the fool, in fact, that thinks that God only comes to them. We actually have to draw near to God. So, um, well, and even here's a short example. You think, like, waiting is so powerful. When Jesus was about to leave the planet, he said, it's better that I go so that the Holy Spirit could come. And so I would like it personally is that if Jesus left, it'd be cool if like they showed up at the same time almost, like they passed the baton. It was like Jesus left and the Holy Spirit descended and there's like, hey guys, I'm with you. Instead, Jesus said, go to Jerusalem and wait. Man, and there was a larger group of people that waited and then eventually it dwindled because God was testing to see who actually really wants to seek me, who really wants to know me. And then the Holy Spirit showed up in power and whammy, the church was born just like we, uh, we sang just a few, few moments earlier. So in the last seven minutes, amazing. In the last seven minutes, I have seven things to help us wait well in God's waiting room. God must be with me if that's happening because seven is a holy number. Okay, so you guys ready for seven things? Get your phones out. Get the app out. Get ready to write this down because this is, you're going to, if you're not in God's waiting room, you want to get in it and you want to do these things well. So these are seven things to help us wait well in God's waiting room. Number one is know that God loves you. Now, you can say, I love you, and someone can say, I love you to you, but guess what? You've got to actually believe it. Someone can love you with all of their love, and if you don't believe it, it means nothing to you. You're just like, they don't love me. But they do love you, but they, they don't love me. God loves you. Let me tell you, every soul in this room God loves you. I'm actually pumped up about that in an emotional way. God loves you. He loves you so dearly. We look at the most famous football scripture in the world, John 3:16. For God so what? He loved the world that he did what? He gave, right? The evidence is in the scriptures. I love that we can be confident uh, that he loves us. Number two, we get to know that God actually hears you. Because you can know that someone loves you, but do they hear me? Are they actually listening to me? 1 John 5.14 says, this is the confidence we have in approaching God. That if we ask anything according to his will, what does it say? He hears us. The only stipulation is that we ask according to his will. God, and you begin to pray his will. How do you know what his will is? Begin to open up the scriptures. And you can begin to just pray the Bible. You can go on our app, and you can. there's all sorts of guided prayers in our prayer passport. It's phenomenal. I love that we can be confident in approaching God, knowing that he hears us. Number three, everyone say number three. Awesome. Uh, recognize that God's ways are higher than your ways. Isaiah 55, 8 and 9 says, For my thoughts, God's saying this to us, for my thoughts are not your thoughts. I'm glad. Uh, Neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. And my thoughts higher than your thoughts. Who thinks the, ab- the, the creator of this whole universe might know a little bit more about you? He might have a little bit better idea of timelines, of orchestrating things, the same God that put this whole universe together. Like if we broke it down to the smallest level, which I don't know what that is because I'm not scientific, and I'm sure whatever we've discovered, it goes smaller and smaller and smaller anyways. 
God is higher than us. So in our waiting room, even though we think our number should maybe be called, we might need to just chill out and say, God's ways are higher than my ways. Number four, we can uh, put your hope in his word. Now, you can put your hope in a lot of different things, but when you begin to put your hope in the word of God, in the Bible, which if you don't have a Bible, we'd love to give you one after service. So I can tell you, we'll tell you later how to get one of those. But put your hope in God's word. You can take his word, and if it says, by his stripes I am healed, you can begin to pray that over your life. And you can put your hope in a God who gave us a flawless word, his Bible. Number five, trust in the Lord. These are all really simple, but they're good things to know in the waiting room. In the waiting room, you start to waver in your trust, don't you? Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, what does it say? Trust in the Lord with what? All of your heart. Not just like 90% of it. You might say, I got 99% of my trust in you, God. And just this one little side project over here that if it goes sideways, I'm taking the 1%. No. Uh, With all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will what? He will make your paths straight. That is awesome. Number six, we got two left here. Be strong and take courage. Like I said, you might enter into that. You might enter into God's waiting room and you might be at a place where it is, you are not full of courage. You are broken. And if you are broken, that is okay. If you are hurting, that is actually normal. That's why we have God. And that's not just why we have God, but that's why God wanted to come to us to fix the brokenness. He wanted to give us strength. He wanted to give us courage. It, every human in this world experiences brokenness. Every human here experiences just that, that gut-wrenching feeling of, of just like sometimes just wanting to just fold in life and say, I'm done. I'm done. But you can actually go into God's waiting room and you can become strong and you can become uh, full of courage. We oftentimes can just have these what-ifs and what could be's, but as we begin to direct our trust, our hope in God, knowing that he hears us, knowing that he loves us, what happens? You begin to reshape your mind and your heart begins to transform. When your mind begins to change, and it's tough to break some old habits in this mind, but as you begin to get some new thinking and it shifts and it changes, and it's like a cog, like a gear that's maybe just all rusted up and you, you get some, well, I use, I use, uh, PL400, it's a ProLab product. Scott will sell it to you. It's better than uh, 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 WD-40, way better. You spray that on there. Let me tell you, my life changed. That, and you spray that on there, that starts to break free, and your mind starts to break free. It's like, I am not a victim. And, and you, you begin to think, I am, I, am not, I am not just a mess up of somebody else's life. I am actually a loved, created human right? And the mind starts to break, and then you begin to get courage, and that drops into you, and you actually come out strengthened like Thor with the Thor's hammer. Thor not in the very end when he's like other Thor who's not too fit, but, but, but the, you know, and you come out with Thor's hammer, and you are just walking around with this, and you're just like, whammy! You are strong when God releases you from that waiting room. Then the final thing, number seven, you t- got to take some time to worship. You got to take some time to worship because worship, what is worship? It's worth-ship. What are you giving worth to? We are creatures of worship that have, since we were conceived, we are worshiping. We are just looking to fulfill me, give to me, right? And right now, we are all worshiping in this room. What are you elevating as the highest thing in your reality? It doesn't mean that you think about, it doesn't mean that you, you don't think about life and that you're just so heavenly minded that you're no earthly good. It it means that you are in all, in all circumstances, you're saying, God, I want you to rule and reign in this situation. And you begin to elevate the name of Jesus. You begin to elevate God. And you begin to elevate, um, even though you haven't seen it. You know, we sing a song. I know breakthrough is coming by faith. I see a miracle. I should have sang it in this key, but it's just all right. We sing that. We know it's coming. We don't know when it's coming, but that's worship. And it doesn't mean, I'm going to forget about all my problems. You're just saying, I elevate the name of Jesus above all my problems, and you just begin to worship in God's waiting room. 
what are you elevating in your life? That is simply what worship is. What do you give the highest place? What do you give the most worth to? You can worship great things. You can worship healthy things. You can worship health and fitness. But you can also worship fear and anxiety and your problems. You can worship anything, anything at any time. This is my final thought, and this is kind of the filter when it comes to God's waiting room. I believe that this would be like on the door, above the door frame. As you walk in, it would say this, we are not fighting for victory, but we are fighting from victory. That is such a powerful mindset change. We're not trying to get victory. God has already given us a victory. It's so cool that he's given us victory already. And so we are actually worshiping from the perspective of heaven, from, and, and, and we're, it's just way different. So hopefully you can apply that filter. But uh, I've almost run myself out of time, but I believe God wants to do something powerful in the next few moments. So I want to invite you guys to stand up. You're either on your way into God's waiting room, you're either in it, or you're just coming out. And uh, you might have been actually unaware that God has a waiting room. You've been sitting in the other one. You're like, screw this. I'm getting out of this one and into God's. All are welcome in God's waiting room. So let me just pray over you guys. God, I just thank you for your faithfulness right now. God, I thank you that we can just choose you. God, I thank you that you are here with us right now. God, you promised never to leave or forsake us. And God, ultimately, I thank you, God, that you have a great plan and that we have the incredible privilege to be a part of that plan. God, right now, I pray over, over every single person listening, every soul, God, that you would right now begin to bring your comfort, God, that you would bring your power over every single person here, God, and God, that people would be able to wait well, God, God, people, give people the courage to even just get into that waiting room and trust you. God, we thank you that you're with us. God, we thank you for your word. And as we continue just in an attitude of prayer, um, I just want to encourage us. You know, we take, this will be the first time in this room, but we have taken so many opportunities to say yes to Jesus. And if you've never said yes to Jesus, that is like the all access pass to get into that waiting room. And so my encouragement right now is I'm going to give every single person in this room who hasn't had an opportunity to say yes to Jesus to do that right now. And so with everyone's eyes closed, I want to invite you. We're going to pray a prayer. I'm going to lead us in a prayer. We're all going to say it together. And we are going to just actually give our lives to Jesus. And maybe you haven't done this in a long time and you want to do this again. You are welcome to do that. But the main thing is that you are actually praying it from your heart. So let's pray together. Let's say, Jesus, I say yes to you. I want to follow you. And I trust you with my life. Would you forgive me of my sin? Thank you for a brand new start today. In Jesus' name, and a faithful church said together, amen. Come on, let's give God some praise right now. We hope today's message encouraged you. If you want to take your next step in saying yes to Jesus, you can always contact us at cty.lc or fill out the next step section on the City Life app. It's an honor as a church to play just a small part in what God is doing in your life. We look forward to seeing you soon here at City Life.